Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for being with us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. At this time, more than 76,000 COVID-19 cases have been confirmed globally. Over 2,200 deaths have occurred, most in China. The number of deaths and new cases in China dropped for three straight days. Confirmed cases, it seems, according to some rumors, have started going up again, but that's unconfirmed. Now, the Diamond Princess, a ship which was docked off the coast of Yokohama in Japan since February the 3rd, as of the 18th, had the highest concentration of affected people outside of China. That's more than 600 of, of them. Hundreds of people who tested negative on the ship have been allowed to leave for their homes. Confirmed cases of COVID-19 are in about 27 countries now. We have a consultant infectious diseases physician, Dr. Iyohe Akase from Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Idiaraba, on the show. You're welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Now, what is making this virus so potentially dangerous? Yes. Um, the, okay, so why use the word dangerous? It's, uh, it's, it's relative. Okay. Um, in truth, it's not really a mortal virus in itself. I mean, uh, most scientists believe that if you take it, you know that most of the cases that are reported 76,000 are severe and symptomatic and clinically diagnosed. Okay. We yes. know that. Most of them, yes. We know that over 80% of cases, it's estimated, are not, are not significant enough to be diagnosed in hospital. Okay. So most people believe that what we're seeing is just 15 to 20 percent of what should have been. Of the real cases. Of the real cases. So the cases come and go. So they come Without and go. And some, so some don't even get to come to us. But even in China, I mean, we have stories of how that, you know, there was scarcity of bed space. People had to wait in line for over a week to get beds. So those that are not sick enough or bad enough we don't even come. So they are not counted among these ones. So it seems that the mortality of this virus is way, way less than a 2 percent were quoted. So it's not really a, mort it's not really a dangerous virus in itself. And that brings into context the issue of, uh, you know, viruses generally, the more dangerous they are at human level, the less they spread. Okay. But the less dangerous they, they are at human level, the more they spread into population. So it's, it's a trade-off. Okay, it's a, it's so a that means off. like SARS is more dangerous because it spread less at human level. So it kills, yes, it kills higher, like mers cov same thing. But the less viruses are able to kill, the more they're able to spread, spread because you have people. asymptomatic people spreading it. Which brings to the question you asked. Could that be the reason why it is spread? And I think that is, that is so. Because most of the people spread who are the drivers of this infection are not probably the ones in hospital. That is the ones at home who are not who are not coming to hospital, who are not overtly sick. They don't feel anything. Yes. They walk around on the streets. They go to work and do and that. And they're spreading it. Definitely. So So it will seem those are the drivers of this those spread There, there was one patient, the first British patient who was who tested positive. He said he absolutely had no symptoms. Up until the time he was being interviewed, he had no symptoms. That's right. So he could be one of the drivers. It's true. And you know, the, you know the, there's another one that's infected 11 people before he was picked up. As of the time, those ones that infected and picked up, he was still testing negative to the virus until he eventually tested positive. So there is, now it's clear mm -hmm. that the people can infect others when they are not asymptomatic, and even when their titers and their bodies are still very low, too low to be detected. They can still they can infect still spread. others. So it's really what the, the major driver of this infection really is the fact that it is not such a, a mortal or danger in itself. So it allows spread okay. into the population. Now, Africa's first case that happened in Egypt, it was shrouded in mystery. I mean, I don't even know the person up until now. Mm. Why was that? Well, there are, so many, there are so many reasons around it in terms of um, discrimination, stigmatization, and all of that. And, you know, there are economic issues around this. So countries have lost a lot of revenue with these bans, travel bans, and all of that, and goods from China and everything. So I'm sure all countries just want to protect themselves and uh, not be listed as, oh, you had it. So especially where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. Because when that is put on record that he was coming from a social place, which again brings us to the politics of outbreaks and all that. I think people should know. So, but then, you know, people, so those kind of things going to say, okay, don't name They're us. just protecting Yes, don't interests. name us, yes, so that we don't get, you know, blacklisted. Oh, by the yeah. way, the Egyptian patient has recovered. Yes. Um, 
this self-interest, it took quite a dangerous dimension in Ukraine mm. when uh, people started stoning the buses that were bringing uh, uh, patients from, from China, from, you know, from outside Ukraine. What would you say people should do? Because I know that part of the reason why this is happening is that people are scared. That's right. What, what would you say is the correct action rather than stoning the buses with rocks? I mean, when, when you see things like that happening, it is evident that that community was not, there was no community engagement prior to that. I mean, for something that is driving so much uh, public fear and the concern, I mean, it, it's improper for you to just bring people into that community, for them to be aware you're bringing people on only that when day. they're on their hand. I mean, you, that, just, you can, that reaction will occur anywhere. So for things like that to happen, you need to, I mean, you have countries as a whole, governments, who have reacted like this. I mean, you can't blame those people. We had, now, there was a ship that, that apart from the diamond prince, there was a ship that eventually docked in Cambodia a few days ago. It was rejected by countries until, so this issue of rejecting, you know, groups of people is not just that, I mean, it happens where, so there's also fear. So I know before to mitigate that, you really need to engage the community, explain to them, and explain to them the process you have put in place to make sure that they are not infected. Because they consider you are bringing it to give it to them. So you've got to engage them and explain to them what you have done to make sure it doesn't get to them, so they understand and cooperate with you. Otherwise, that's going to happen anywhere okay. in the world. All right. Yeah. So um, we've spoken about uh, some of the symptoms of COVID-19, fever, dry cough, and then some of the terminal problems, kidney and all that, yeah. kidney trouble and all that. But you know, a study said about 10% of the patients in that study came up with abdominal symptoms, diarrhea. Right. So people are saying that maybe there's a fecal oral route to this, to this uh, disease. What do you say? No, I agree. Because uh, most of the people, especially now, that brings us to the issue of cruise ships and um, the, the kind of um, measures that were taken to prevent infection. Now, to a large extent, it is with, we have paid a lot of attention to respiratory transmission. Yes, droplets. we have. We haven't looked at other things. So, and you know, so that was put in place, masks, wash your hands and all that. We would have come from toilet and all that. But again, issues around waste disposal, how is that taking? Because definitely there's a lot of GI symptoms. I know viruses that cause GI symptoms can be transmitted through okay. physics. So, so, that really so is, we're now talking about fecal matter also. Also. Wow. All right. So um, let's talk about the Diamond Princess. Hundreds of, pa of patients, hundreds of people who were kept in quarantine, who tested negative, yes. were allowed to leave. But there's, I don't know about other people, but so, some people on the cruise ship, and a particular infectious diseases expert complained bitterly about conditions on the Diamond Princess. He said, uh, that the red and green zones didn't have any particular demarcation. That's in right. other words, people who were infected were mixing with uninfected people. That's right. Then you have rooms that don't have uh, uh, ventilation. I mean, like ships. That's right. You have a window, but it doesn't open, you know? And, and you know, he said this contributed to the, to the uh, spread, and he was in more fear of his life than he ever was. Mm. He wasn't in fear of his life during the Ebola effort mm. in which he, he participated. Mm. Looking back, you know, with hindsight, do you think it would have been better for them to let off these passengers much earlier in the quarantine stage? Yeah, you know, the, the knowledge about this evolving. With hindsight, yes, I agree with you. They should have, what they are doing now, they should have done it then, tested them earlier, and taken them to the place where they have done appropriate quarantine. However, you know, there was a lot of fear and response. Now, you know that on a ship, people book not according to their disease status. They book That's right. and get rooms. According so, to their family to their, or yes. preferred space. That's right. And how much they paid. So because they became symptomatic, you're not going to move them there. I mean, ideally, the ship should have been able to do that. So, okay, this is going to be a quarantine area. This is a holding area. This is for mm -hmm. sick people. That was not done. And people just were, demarcate the yeah, ship. Yeah, demarcate that. But if, if from what we heard, it seemed as if people were still in their rooms. And they were saying, you just, were just keeping you there. Don't come out. I know in, in, for a disease that is so easy to spread, that's going to always go to true because it means that people, who, somebody who is uninfected is going to pass in front of somebody who is infected's door or something like that. So I, I can imagine there's going to be a tough, tough, you know, handling all of those patients on, on the ship. Obviously, people were aware now that a lot of infection prevention control practices were violated on that ship. On that ship, yeah. yeah. So, so it was inevitable that that happened. Now, 
it's also compounded by the fact that, uh, which you mentioned earlier, that people who are negative are, you know, transmitting. Now, there is, the other ship I mentioned, that like, you know, Cambodia, allowed some people to drop off. They test the negative and left the ship. Only for them to test positive afterwards. Okay, so we are, we are talking of many, should I say, index cases now. That's right, that's right. Depending on the country you're looking at. That's right. There are several index cases out there now. That's right. So it's a much more complicated situation than it was maybe last week. That's right, that's right. Now, there's one other thing that the, the prof, uh, you know, who, who went to try and help on the ship said, that people were wearing gl uh, gowns and masks and gloves, touching patients, and still calling on their phones. Uh. Now, here's what I want to ask. People are not going to let their phones go. Uh. Some of those patients were giving updates That's about right. their condition. That's right. Say, we are testing mm. positive now. Mm. This is how things are going. And, and mm. you know, they have the phone up and they're they are taking pictures. That's right. Is there a way of disinfecting one's phone? Shouldn't we include that into the, you know, wash your hands and do such and such with your phone mm. to stay free? No, so, so it, 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 again, it brings us to the, to the circumstances surrounding this outbreak. Ideally, in a, in a, when you have personnel who are dealing with cases that are disinfectious, they should they leave their belongings like phone and all that somewhere. After they finish, they go back there. But I can imagine what happened on that ship that you didn't have enough health personnel that taking mean, care that of patients. So, so you they didn't have the liberty of leaving their things and coming back to it later. So I can imagine that those kind of things, again, boils down to what we said, that a lot of infection prevention control practices were broken. So it could be by me at a point in time, somebody will, I mean, uh, with uh, the lack of control, and, you know, somebody will just go touch his phone and all that. So it boils down to the fact there's a lot of violations going on. So should people, should we, we, the issue of uh, disinfecting phones, it's, 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 not, it's not feasible in a way. They should leave it in a safe place, finish disinfecting themselves before they go touch their phones. Okay. Because some of the, the disinfectants used, especially in our setting, on, on things can destroy those phones. So, so what would you use on a phone, I mean, just in case it's been touched? So, so your alcohol rubs, your alcohol hand rubs, those hand sanitizers. Those hand sanitizers yeah, you could do. Yeah, you could use them and clean your phones. We're talking about at community general level now. But when you're taking care of patients, you're the load and the, the, the gaps, the, the windows you have to operate are very narrow. So you, you leave them in a safe place. You don't okay. carry anything there. When you finish, you go back in there. Because when you're carrying so that's your phone, real isolation. Real isolation. But like you can imagine, because when you're taking care of patients, this infectious. You don't have the window of the phone. The moment you do that, you violate so many principles and infection is going to occur. So you leave your things outside there, remove your wrist, touches, everything, leave it there. When you finish, you get disinfected changes something before you touch other things like that. But the moment you break that focus and touch something, do phone, it's a, an infection is going to occur. There's no two ways about it. Okay, so at least two people from Australia who were negative when they went off that ship are now positive That's right. in Australia. Well, happily enough, many countries made special arrangements to evacuate, their you know, people. their yeah. people from the ship. Mm. But, you know, people were saying that the buses mm. that took them from the ship, they were insulated enough from the drivers. The drivers were insulated from the, the uh, evacuees, but they put them on trains, mm. buses. Isn't this, I mean, doesn't this send red flags? Yeah, the, for yeah, well, I mean, for that large number of people, I mean, it's difficult. I know to it's get, difficult. Yes, yeah, it's difficult to, <laughs> but, to get ambulance and but all But we're talking that. about life here. Yes. Yeah, so, so the proper thing, you know, in truth, um, when you put, I mean, that's all you can do. You can put in measures to try and make sure you mitigate that and quarantine them. So, so those drivers will now be counted as contacts as well, mm -hmm. and there was there's measures I'm sure we'll put in place to do that, and. For all those people coming in from those ships. So those ones are identified and are, have been quarantined, in fact, are the, are the least of their worries. Now, I'm aware that there are some people that have not, been, uh, that have not yet been accounted for that left that ship. Oh, and so, why is this? So some, no, that's the other ship, no, not the Diamond Okay, the now. one that went to yeah, Cambodia. Some, yeah, so, but those ones that, so those ones that are testing negative that left the ship, some tested positive, even those who are testing negative, there's no guarantee that they won't test positive in a, few, in a few weeks to come, in a few days, in a few weeks to come. That is why they are still taken to another quarantine for another 14 days. 
So none of those people that left the Cambodia, that left the Diamond Princess, are going to go back into their families. They are going to go into another quarantine for another 14 days, yes. including those drivers that took them there. At least they may not be with them, but to, to make sure that within the next 14 days, anybody that lose symptoms will we'll be, be taken to the yeah. hospital. Let's take a, a short break now. Please stay with us. We're going on a short break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We're talking about the COVID-19 coronavirus disease on Health Matters on Channels Television. If you have questions about the topic, the number to call is 0805-468-3514. That's 0805-468-3514. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. Now, let us talk about chloroquine. There's been too much noise about chloroquine. People are saying chloroquine has actions against the coronavirus. Please just enlighten us. Yeah, that's true. The, um, we've had um, anecdotal reports, that is, people, I saw it reports of people who have used it in, in patients with coronavirus with some response. I know chloroquine is one of the drugs we have that has a very wide spectrum of action on different types of you know, organisms that can do that. Um, not just malaria, it, can, it also has an, you know, a response against non-infectious um, diseases. diseases, yes, like immune mediated. So it does have that. So in truth, you know, it has some and it's given some hope against that. But then again, like the issue with this is that with a new, so this is a new indication now. Okay. So it cannot just go into the market for, for, for COVID-19. It still has to go through the processes to ensure that truly the effect is not just, you know, Half, half major. A flash item. in the pan. Yes, yes. It has, it's true before it comes out. As so, in other words, you're advising people not to try this at home. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it cannot come as a recommendation. Okay. I mean, so, so in truth, I mean, as a clinician, sometimes when when you have a disease that does not have a cure yet, mm -hmm. um, if I am going to use it on a patient, I will explain to them that you know what, this is not recommended. Okay, because we don't have enough evidence, we don't know how it's going to be on the long run, all that. But if you accept, and so you can sign or something, then that we are all going to bear the consequences. Like of whatever before happens. You are, yeah. So it's not something I can say. Go and take or get ready for and all that. But clinicians can, you know, under that circumstances, you know, decide to use it. Okay. Let's take David from Abuja on the line right now. Hello, David. Hello. Good afternoon. Afternoon, um, please, my question is, um, someone said taking a lot of garlic can be a preventive measure towards this virus. How true is it? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. Let's take that. Garlic. Yeah, yeah garlic. So, again, it's, um, you know, garlic does have some, some beneficial effects, not just on corona, on, on many, you know, infections, especially viruses. Okay. I know most viruses, what you really, what the most important predictor of survival is an individual's underlying immunity, and then how able he is to mount that immunity when he's under stress. Okay. So garlic may not be, it may not be, it's not really a corona thing. Mm -hmm. Garlic has some proven medicinal or beneficial effects to it. So in other so, words, if you've been taking this in your diet before, that's fine. Really? But it's not like it's a it's cure for anything. That, yeah, you're going to see and say, I'm taking this to cure corona. It's not really a cure. It just helps your body. It's your body that's only really fighting. Mm -hmm. Anything, including taking lots of water, taking exercise, sleeping well, all these are things that help your body fight infections in the general level. So it's just as saying if you have corona, sleep more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, so it's not really something you use to treat, but something to help your body fight it. But so uh, it is something that it encouraged generally, not just for corona. Okay, so how about this drug? I hope I'm pronouncing it well. It's called Remdesivir. Remdesivir. Yeah, now, so, they yeah. said this has actions against SARS yes. and MERS. Yes. We're getting closer now. Yes. And it has been tried on one of the patients yes. who wasn't such a good case. Mm. Like you said, okay, we don't really know what's going to happen with this case. Mm. It's really quite serious. So nobody loses anything. Let's try this drug. Yeah. What, what do you say about that? Yeah, remdesivir is uh, it's a broad spectrum antiviral. It does have some effect, not just on SARS and other coronaviruses. It also has some effect on Ebola. But it's not, it's not a drug. It's still investigational. It's not a drug that has been approved for marketing to prescription. Let me, let me just pause you for a second there and take Senator from Bielsa. Hello, Senator. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, yeah, my, my question for Doctor is, I, I wanted to know, we've been hearing of the numbers of uh, 
coronavirus uh, victims or affected persons uh, with the number of the death rate and uh, those that are in quarantine or those in hospital. I, I didn't want to know, has there been recorded cases of those who have been cured or who have been released or from sick bed that they have recovered from this uh, virus uh, infection? That's a good one. From yeah, Senator. it's a good one. It's a good one. The interestingly, I mean, I mean, this throws into light how we, the kind of publicity we give to things. Yeah, but I did put a slide up that yeah. says more than eighteen thousand. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it just says that I mean, if only two percent of people infected die, you can imagine that the ninety-eight percent went home. So we have lots and lots of records of people that you know go well and went home. So it's really, like I said. We made a lot of noise about how easy it is, but a lot of people have gotten well and, you know, have gone home. So Some accounts are saying more than 18,000. Some accounts are saying about 21,000, you know, not really sure, but at least people are going home. People are going home. I mean, we have records of, currently we have records of 76, over 70,000 people so far. None have been, have been recorded and, you know, just over 2,000, less than 3,000 have died. So it just shows you that at least we know that over 30,000 have you know gotten better and gone home yeah you have a point there yeah. the people who have died are just well they are well, human not, lives yeah, they, yes, yes, quite but, all right yeah. but when we talk about seventy six thousand, yes. they haven't died yeah. they're still alive yes Although we some do have we have lost some, some yeah, but, but lots of people are still alive lots of people some some of the people that have been released from those ships some of them um had symptoms they tested positive some have been taken and they are definitely getting better and so if you look at other outside china I mean, um, we don't have up to, we, the number is small. I think 10, less than 10 or so have died outside China from that. So you can, there are lots of people that have gotten better. And I think this is one aspect that we need to bring, we need to bring out clearly. That is, our, yes, you are taking lots of economic toll and spread, but there are lots of people who have gotten better. Let's, so. let's uh, take Cosmos's call. Cosmos is calling in from Ghana. Hello, Cosmos. Hello. What's your question, Cosmos? Welcome to the show. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Mm. Hello. Hello, Cosmos. We can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Um, I am very, very, very happy to. I'm, I am very, very happy to see what the job that you people are doing for in Nigeria. And I also want to advise, please, with it, I, I am I'm not a, a, a greater. I'm a poor man. I don't, I don't go to school. But what I'm saying, that is coming to the world right now. Please, please, mommy, educate the women that we have. The women you educate the women that we have also to teach them how to educate our children, how to educate the people that is going from here to the market, the people that where they are buying food. Because we are here in Ghana, the Ghanaians don't know what we what people are saying here. The white men are trooping in Ghana. I'm seeing the 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 the, 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 the people trooping in Ghana, but they are not watching. They are not seeing this this thing that we are discussing as a serious something. So please, in Nigeria, educate our women. How to educate the husband, the children, so that this thing will fight it in Nigeria, so that we will not hear every uh, 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 death in Nigeria. As Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cosmos. You know, Cosmos' uh, uh, contribution brings me to the point of how, how much enlightenment is going on. I mean, like jingles on the radio, on TV, maybe posters out in public. I, I know that there were some announcements in Lagos. Yes. I don't know how many other states are doing as well as Lagos. Yes. And then other parts of Africa. What's it like? What, what, what do you feel? Well, there's, there's, there's still some work to be done there. I'm aware that among uh, people who have access to international uh, media channels like China and all of that, I'd, you know, do have that, but some work needs to be done in regards to it. Not just women, like uh, he mentioned, yes. but everybody, everybody has a role to play in educating ourselves, really, about the dangers of it. Now, L lastly, yeah. people are saying that this uh, we've come to the peak of this uh, virus infection. What gives them that impression? Do we have markers? Well, it's probably because if the China is at the epicenter, the new case, the number of new cases are going, are going down. down. So everybody gives up. That's why you see, the WHO said we have a narrow window. Well, there's another aspect to this that we're having new cases elsewhere who haven't made to China or contact anybody in China, so like Iran. So the question is, 
Do we have another epicenter there? But that's another question for another. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been beautiful talking with you. Thank you. And thank you for being with us from all those places, Lagos and all over Nigeria and beyond Nigeria to Ghana and other places. Have a wonderful day. And Mary Alala, you soon.